Select the Edit application from the taskbar to display the timeline. The timeline is locked to the bottom of the screen and is resized by clicking and dragging on the grey line at the top of the timeline. You can change if the line is active all the way across the timeline or just at the edges in the F1 menu under Resize Video Track Bar. Individual tracks can be increased in size by clicking and holding on the track filter and dragging up and down independently of the other tracks, the same as you can on a floating clip. The edit window is locked to the top right corner of the screen and provides a visual representation of the edit on the timeline at the current position of the orange cursor line. It can be resized using the chevrons in the bottom left corner, one of the few times you will find the resize at the bottom left instead of the bottom right. Clicking anywhere on the timeline will bring the cursor to that point. Clicking and dragging will move through the timeline. The cursor line also acts as an in point unless one has been marked for any method of placing media on the timeline. The timeline defaults to one video track and two audio tracks with a duration of one minute. To clear the timeline, click on clear at the right of the timeline. To clear and reset back to the default, double click on clear. This will also purge your cache if it has been set up in the F1 menu. The duration of the timeline is at the bottom right of the screen, to the right of DUR. The timecode to the left of DUR is the current cursor position. Clicking on DUR will change the timecode display to frames. The hidden features on the timeline are almost identical to those on a floating clip, and all but one of the keyboard shortcuts are the same. The difference is that Shift will not insert on a timeline. Instead, you have an insert button which can be turned on and off on screen or by using insert on the keyboard. You now also have audio monitoring at the far right of the timeline. This does not have a scale as it can be configured to represent house conventions, but as a guide you should be aiming to have speech and full sound audio averaging in the yellow section. This will be looked at further in the audio tutorials. Once a selection has been marked on a floating clip, it can be placed on the timeline in four main ways. Number one, press the copy box on the floating clip and drag and drop into the timeline edit window. This has the advantage of giving you a preview of the edit you are about to perform before you let go of the clip. Number two, press the copy box on the floating clip and drag and drop directly to the timeline. This gives you the option of dropping footage onto individual tracks despite what may have been selected on the floating clip, but it's also easy to drop onto the wrong place and lose your clip. Number 3. From the More menu at the top right edge of the floating clip, select Edit. Fourth and finally, press Enter on the keyboard. This is the most commonly used method. All or selected tracks, if the track filters are highlighted, will be transferred using the timeline cursor as the in point, or at an in point if one has been marked on the timeline. Be aware that the timeline will default to overwriting from where the current cursor position is unless in and out points have been selected or insert is active. To place the whole clip or edit on a timeline, drag and drop straight from the bin onto the timeline edit window, which will add more tracks and increase the duration of the timeline if required. Dragging and dropping a marked clip without using copy will give you what you have marked on the timeline, but you'll lose the original clip. You can also use Swap in the Floating Clip More menu to place the whole clip on the timeline and put the contents of the timeline back into a floating clip, even if the timeline was blank. This can be a good way of working on two edits simultaneously, or temporarily keeping anything which may be on the timeline from a previous user. Just make sure you don't accidentally close the floating clip down. If you do, you can bring back the last clip you closed by right-clicking on the desktop. Each segment on the timeline will display a duration at the top right corner in white and a timecode for the source in and out points in black at the bottom left and right. A tape name will also be displayed if one was entered when recorded in. Timeline filters are used to control which tracks are affected when you perform a function. Pink is on and grey is off. If no filters are selected, the function will be applied to all. In the case of a clip being added to the timeline, the system default is to transfer track for track, so that A1 on the source will transfer to A1 on the edit timeline. Filters can be used on floating clips and the timeline to control source and destination, for example taking audio 1 on a floating clip to audio 2 on the timeline. 
If no tracks have been selected on the timeline, any audio track selected on the floating clip will be inserted onto the highest available track on the timeline. For example, if A2 and A3 are selected on a floating clip, but there's no selection on the timeline, they will appear on A1 and A2. If an audio track is selected on the timeline, but no audio is selected on the floating clip, A1 will be taken from the clip anyway. The timeline selection overrules any selection on the floating clip. If there's a conflict on the track mapping, the edit timeline always takes priority. To add another track to the timeline, press the Add Video or Add Audio button above and below the track filters. On server products, you can have a maximum of 8 audio tracks and 32 video tracks, although in practice it's better to stay under 15. To delete a track, press Delete at the top left of the timeline and then click on the track filter of the track you want to lose. If you have any other track filters selected, those tracks will also be deleted. You can also right-click on any track filter and select Delete. Inside the F1 menu is an option to choose how many levels of undo are stored. It is recommended to set this to a maximum of 20 as it takes up space in your cache. Clicking the undo box at the bottom left of the timeline or using Ctrl and Z will undo the last action. Clicking and holding on the undo box will display a list of previous actions which can be scrolled through. If an action is undone, a redo button will appear next to undo on the timeline. The keyboard shortcut for redo is Ctrl and R. Pressing Tab will change the active window focus between a floating clip and the edit window, indicated by a white border. Floating clips can also be docked with the edit window by placing the clip over the left-hand edge and dropping it when the window displays a thick yellow highlight. The floating clip must not be bigger than the edit window, or it will not dock. While docked, selecting clip icons in a bin will load the clip into the docked window. To increase the duration of the timeline, click on the current duration, enter the desired length and press enter. Alternatively, you can click, hold and move the cursor in a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction to increase or decrease the length. To expand the timeline to fit the screen, removing blank from the end of the timeline, click on the current duration, type in zero and press enter.